Hey guys, I want to take you out on a real life PR photo shoot, which would have scared the bejesus out of me had I attempted this years ago when I was starting out as a professional photographer, never mind as a beginner. There's some pretty tough challenges to be faced, as I think you're about to see. It's for a couple of incredibly inspirational young guys who've just rowed unsupported across the Atlantic Ocean to raise funds for the British Skin Cancer Foundation after their father was killed by the disease two years ago. Please support them in smashing their target of £100,000 raised. There's a link below this video and there's also one in the card that's popping out up here somewhere. Um, you can click on either at any time during the video. And please stick around to the end of this video because... Jude Massey has just got himself into the Guinness Book of Records because he has left his comfort zone to a massive level. And he has a lovely little five minute chat with us about the benefits of leaving our comfort zones because that is where we grow, that is where we evolve. Had I not pushed myself beyond my own comfort zones, I would have never been able to take on a photo shoot like this and deliver the goods. So please stick around to the end and hear what he has to say. I hope you find him as inspirational as I do. So Thanks Mark, dry. splendid. So I'm getting dressed up for a special occasion. This is Mark, my rib, our rib driver. We are going to go and do a real life PR shoot. We haven't got the best weather, but there's a couple of guys, Jude and Greg, who I've known for a while and their mum's a really good friend of mine. They've just rowed unsupported across the Atlantic Ocean and they're now coming home to their hometown. And we're hoping there'll be a little bit of a fanfare and a bit of a do to welcome them home. Um, but I thought it'd be interesting for you guys to just sort of come and join me on a real life PR shoot and uh, we'll see how it unfolds. So we've got to go see the Harbour Master. Yep, and then show you, take you down and show you the pontoons. Okay. Choose your plate, your app shoots, your app cool. and photographer. Yeah, photographer for free. Jeez. So that's all part of it. Like, we're going to go and recce. We're going to go and find out where we've got to go, where we need to stand. Where's the boys going to come in with the boat in order to get the shots? So the shots I'm taking are for them to release to national press. Um, some agencies are sending their own. Hopefully the television news crews will be here in a little while, but... So let's go and meet the harbour master. Let's go and get wet. Yeah, okay, let's yeah. go and do that. Brilliant. So, we've just had, I've got my trendy hat on. We've just had a nice chat with the harbour master. It's really important to do this sort of thing. If you're doing a PR shoot and it involves a public right of way, stuff like boats and things, do your research, make sure everything's safe, make sure it's gonna work. So, this is all part of your planning of the shoot. We've just talked to the harbour master. We've been through the route. The guys are going to come up the river. Hopefully there'll be a flotilla of boats with them. Now there's a huge great ferry going to be coming in at two o'clock. Yeah, 14.25 it's boots. Okay, 20, to, 25 past whether two. Whether it does or not, it's another matter. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the last thing you want is to have them rowing in front of a buster great ferry, isn't it? So it's like we're going to be following in behind the ferry. Um, to try and get the shots. We've looked at the best places on the map, where to shoot from, at what angle, to make sure that Mark's rib is in the correct navigation channel and not hitting into oncoming traffic in the river. This is really important, guys. This is all part of your photography shoot. So I think we're going to go and have a quick look at the pontoon. Right, quick discussion as to what angles. Back in the rain, there we go. Back in the rain. I've got my trendy hat on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and see what we can do. We're going that way, are we? If you notice, the uh, tide is going out, or starting to go out, and uh, in about two hours' time when we come back with the boys, the water will have dropped uh, two or three feet, so yep. the angles will change. It's a, it's a gentle tide, and we've got this uh, southerly, southeasterly wind, which will keep us nice and chilly. Keep us nice and chilly, that's yeah. just what we want, viewers. <laughs> yeah. So the guys, Ben, by all means, come and join us. Uh, Ben is our cameraman today. He's doing a cool job out in the rain. Try not to get my camera wet. He's got rain spots on the lens. He can't help it. Do not comment. Um, <laughs> so the guys, they're going to be coming in here, yeah? yeah Over there. there. Somewhere in that little area there in front of those boats with the green covers. Yep. So to try and get a shot, we've got a reception committee coming in over here on the pontoon. Uh, on, not on the pontoon, on the slipway. Hopefully there'll be press people there and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like the, the, the question is, how do we get an interesting shot that's a little bit different to everyone else's? Because everyone else is gonna be over there shooting that way. Now it'd be nice to be over there shooting that way, but is the shot gonna work? And there's only really one chance to do it. Harbour Master's kindly said we can shoot from this pontoon, but I think we're gonna be shooting sideways on with the mess of the boats behind. Would it be possible yeah for us, so if we got a shot from behind and they're gonna be messing around here for 10 or 15 minutes, would you be able to bring me in? Just 
here. And yeah, la bring me in here or possibly land me onto this pontoon. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And sure. then maybe, I'm, I don't know how many people are going to be here, but then maybe run round and then I can join that flotilla and see if I can shoot through the, not flotilla, that press pack, yeah. which yeah, will that's... be over there where John, see where Jonathan is there. Behind Jonathan and to his right, they'll be on that slipway, which you can't see because it's behind a brick wall. But if you could land me here, maybe we can run in here yep. and I could get in amongst the pack and sort of shoot through the pack. Yeah, that's possible, yeah. If you think they'd be... Well, I think they're going to be here about 30 minutes, they said. So there's, there's really? Time that's, what I, that's what I heard. But... It's bloody cold, then. <laughs> it's bloody cold. <laughs> you talk to me long, no. that long, okay. No, no. But uh, you think they've had enough of water, water and <laughs> rain for the last six <laughs> weeks sitting in the Atlantic Ocean? They must be mad. I know, and a week on a cruise ship, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, it was really cool, guys, because they were rowing across. P&O have been following their story. P&O were brilliant. They said, um, look, we've got a cruise liner there in the Caribbean, which is coming back to Southampton. And if you can get there in time, we'd love to bring you back. Isn't that awesome? So they did make it in time. And it's great because it saved, you know, over £7,000 of their funds, of course, yeah. which are good. Which, which would of course come out of the charitable donation, which it would have cost to ship their boat back. So p and very generously brought them back here, brought their boat back and everything. And the guys are actually coming around from Southampton as we speak That's and recce. Right, yeah. So, okay, I think I know where we need to go. Okay, so should we go out of the rain for a minute? Go out of the or rain. We're gonna go put our kit on properly now. Okay. And then uh, we'll be ready to start. Brilliant. Okay, so here we are, we're in the middle of the flotilla. Here are the guys, you see the white boat? This is them, so we've got pouring rain, the worst possible conditions, lens hood, keep it off. I'm shooting at 400 ISO. Give some arms out. On a manual exposure, it's giving me an 800th of a second. Keep checking the histogram. Ben, can you see the guys as well? Mark, Hello. can you keep ahead of them, please? Well done, boys. Well done, Yeah, well done, guys. What do you bastards think you're doing? Having two photographers. <laughs> oh. Can you keep ahead, Mark, a little bit? Thank you. So, we're just moving the boat now to get ahead of them because the shot we need is of the flotilla behind them. So... A little bit to your left, if you can, Mark. Sorry, I don't know the nautical term. It's so we're like directly ahead of them would be perfect, yeah. So like we're directing the Mark who's piloting our boat for us. But look at these people who are behind them. Look at the people who've come to welcome them back in. Flash, look, flash with everybody behind them and all the boats. Everyone just turn to us. We're going to be this side of you, up by the slipway. We're awesome. Going to this is a really great shot, but if we can just get further ahead, that's because I'm shooting with a 70 to 200 mil lens. I need to be far enough away to get a little bit of compression. That looks good. Awesome, we've got waving shots. It's looking good. Can you see anything out of that viewpoint? I can't see anything out of my viewfinder. I don't know about you. We've got Adam here as well. He's shooting for them. Can we go further ahead, please, Mark? Probably about another 20, 30 yards. Wow, look at this, look at this. That's good. Okay, so, Ray, don't fall over. <laughs> That's good. Start to get in position for this this shot. I'm just going in. So now I think we're going to come out to where the experts are. Good, so what we're doing now, if you pan around the other way, see, these are the people who've come to welcome them back even in this miserable weather look at all those look over there on the yacht club roof if you can turn around a little more ben can you get over there Just there you go so what we're gonna do yeah what else do you get for christmas so what we're trying to do is to get so we're lined up with that slipway we were talking about earlier so we can shoot back in. The guys are going to be on the boat with the crowd behind holding up flares. So we've got to get ourselves in position. These are all the sorts of things you've got to think about when you're doing this kind of shoot. It's like, where are you going to be? It's really great having Adam here because he's just instructing Mark because otherwise I wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be able to film while I'm doing this. 
Look at that crowd over there, isn't that cool? Cool. That's quite a nice shot there. I'm just going to get a bit lower because if Mark moves the boat. Whoa. Okay. Sorry, what's occurring, Adam? I wasn't paying gonna, He's going to come alongside here. They're going to let the flares off. Mark's going to come and join them. That's it, Mark. That's your, you know where you're going. Head, you head to, to yeah. No, uh, now flatten so you're going level with them. Go your left, your left, sir. That's it, good. And then just hold it here so I've got the crowd in the background. Right. right. So I think we've got a load of water on the lens. Have you got the tissue, Ben? Okay, cool. I mean, so we're looking at. Sorry, I'm using this. Use this. Uh, we need the. We need some tissue because we've got to do the video camera. But. Okay, cool. Ah, uh, where's the so tissue? Yeah. Oh. Holding it just here, Mark. Holding it just here. Right, here we go. I'm going to clean the lens. Keep rolling. There we go. Ready? Okay, so we've now got a flare shot. You're going to have to look at the guys. Yeah, cool. Hang on. Ready? We're too close, Mark. If we can ease back just a bit. That's perfect. That looks really cool. Excellent. So we've got the guys doing the cool stuff. That's looking pretty good. It's really hard because we've got... Uh, come on to me. We've got the 70 to do 100. It'd be really great if we had a shorter lens. But we haven't because... This is really hard. Can we be further back at all? Adam? Adam? Guys, we're moving this way. Sorry, we're coming this way. Whoa. We're, I don't know about... We're, Adam, we're too close, aren't we? Yeah, I've got 24-70. Oh, you've changed lenses. I haven't. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's go with that. And so what we want to do is to get in front of the boys so we can get a shot looking back the other way with this little mass of boats going on. I think it'll look really cool. Yeah, we've got a big smear on the lens. Let me see if we can... Can you stand up? Oh, I can't. Oh, hang on. There you go. So, here's the shot. Look at the boys. Thank you, boys. So, somehow, we hope... Yeah, we're done. We're done. We should have a shot there. I, of course... Haven't been able to look at those at all because it's just shooting. It's about the light's not going to change to so set the manual exposure and go for it. You see how fast you've got to work, how fast you've got to think. So if you're going to take on a job like this, you need to be sure you understand how to work the camera, how to use it, because you haven't got time to mess around thinking, what aperture do I want? How do I do this? Shall I change modes? Because it's all gone. That was over in a flash. If you want to learn how to do those things, obviously I've got loads of courses that you can come and do. And uh, please buy one, that's what keeps the machine rolling. But also, I would urge you to please, maybe support these guys. You know, there's a link below the video, probably in the card above it, where you can make a donation towards, uh, you know, the Skin Cancer Foundation, because I think they've done an amazing job. So what we're trying to organise is to get the guys and the mayor with Pete on the name of the back of the boat and all this, some of this crowd, because I think it'll look really, really cool. But of course, we're fighting against a load of other photographers. We've got TV people. Okay. Greg, guys, the two of you, this one, Mr. Mayor. Here we go. Thank you. We've got a great shot here with the boat. I hope to God that one worked. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you back in the office. Thank you.
So guys, I'm always talking to you about comfort zones and leaving your comfort zone and the benefits thereof. So this is Jude Massey, who you just saw rowing that boat in the pouring rain. And he's just crossed the Atlantic Ocean. Is now in the Guinness Book, Book of Records as the youngest person ever to row the Atlantic Ocean. At some point, you and Greg kind of said, hey, let's row the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. Yeah, that's a cool idea. <laughs> that would be brilliant. Yeah. And then at some point you sort of went, oh, shit, we've got a boat. Yeah. This is becoming real. Yeah. And then at some point you set off actually into the Atlantic. Yeah. And I, what did you think at that moment? Uh, well, for most people who plan to do this kind of thing, um, you spend at least four years in preparation. We only have one year. So the milestones of having the initial idea, getting the boat and then getting to the start line were very close together. So everything really feels like a blur to me. Um, but I do remember getting to the start line and thinking, you know, our boat's in the water, everything's ready to row across an ocean. And I remember just thinking, I cannot believe that we're about to do this. It was just completely mesmerising the fact that we were able to achieve that. There are costs always attached. Yeah. Like Greg obviously had to stop being a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and devote all his time. So there's a financial implication. Mm. There's the work involved in approaching sponsors, people to to make it happen, mm. to someone to build you a boat, someone yeah. to all those kind of things. So then like all your electronics packed up, yeah. your navigation system failed, your electric water purifier mm -hmm. failed. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you? I mean, how comfortable did you feel at this point? Well, within the first week, things started to go wrong. Within the first night, we lost our GPS for about five minutes, and then it came back on. Um, uh, we had a leak in our boat, so every time a wave would come over the top of the deck, water would leak down onto our control panel, um, and the salt water just, just screwed everything up. And I remember it was about 24 hours in between each thing going wrong, so losing our GPS then losing our water maker and losing our auto helm, which is the thing that steers the boat by itself. And um, I, I was just so lost in so much doubt. Um, I, at that point, with three major things going wrong, I had no belief that we were going to make it. Mm. But you were unsupported. Yes. So you had no support boats. Mm. Even giving up would have meant, what, three or four days before someone could come and actually pluck you out of the water with a ship or yes. something? Yeah, about four days it would take for us to get rescued. And that's the thing, it would always be in the back of my head that if we did have a medical emergency, um, say that I slipped over and I slipped a disc, or um, we had concussion going into compression and that's a really dangerous um, situation to be in, it would take at least four days. So if something majorly medically went wrong, uh, we could have been, we could have died. Was there a turning point at any place where you started to feel more comfortable with yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I, I think for me it was when we got used to all of those problems failing, and we had our new routines in place on how we were going to deal with these issues and being comfortable in that place. Um, and for me, I didn't really think that anything else could go more wrong than the boat sinking at that point. So I was I was able to kind of unconsciously relax um, and just know that in the history of that row when things had gone wrong we would fix them and we would find a way through it but I had a lot of doubt in me in the first couple of weeks that we would have to that we'd have to give in so it was a massive relief. It's interesting how we kind of get used to situations I think mm. um, I know soldiers who go into combat and they're terrified, stupid. Yeah. Five weeks later, they're sitting there in the same situation with bullets pinging off rocks around their heads yeah. and they're laughing and joking and not even wearing their crash helmets. That's the thing, yeah. It definitely became normal to be in such an extremely dangerous environment and um, we would make we would always make sure that we were leashed on, but there were times when we weren't and you almost become too comfortable with... Uh, the notion of not being tied onto the boat because if you fall off it's very difficult to go and get that person so if you fall off you're basically going to drown but you know it, it became normal to be surrounded by 40 foot waves, howling winds um, and just get a buzz of surfing down these huge waves and or you know with the notion that you're so <laughs> isolated and you're in, you're in the middle of nowhere uh, I got to a point where I could really enjoy that and I felt really comfortable so definitely there was 
being put into that context for a week, you definitely get used to the, used to these extreme conditions, and it just goes to show that humans are really good at adapting. We are incredibly mm. good at adapting. Yeah, if we definitely. challenge ourselves to step outside of that kind of comfy day-to-day -day thing. Mm. But we were chatting in the kitchen just now about now your challenge is instead of having an ocean around yeah, you, you're absolutely. back in a hometown and you're a celebrity. Yeah. You're now out of your comfort zone mm. all over again. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, it was very evident from stepping off the boat and being surrounded by societal norms, even in Barbados. Um, when you're rowing and you're on that boat, you're surrounded by waves and nothing else. And that really enables you to clearly think and see things with a really fresh perspective. But I found that as soon as we got onto land and we were surrounded by so much stimulants like advertising, buildings, people, um, colours, it becomes, it became for me, and I'm still struggling with that now, very difficult to um, uh, think clearly. And I'm definitely very different from the person that stepped onto that boat when we were leaving to row across the Atlantic. And the person I am now is completely different. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 excited to see what the future holds too as well. But I have no idea what it's no gonna be. no, and I'm Not sure you're just going to sit in that space for the yeah, moment and definitely. see what happens. Yeah, a lot of reflection. Yeah, and guys, I hope you've enjoyed chatting to to Jude. And there are many interviews, I'm sure, all over YouTube and stuff about the voyage itself. But I wanted you to just talk to someone who has massively stepped out of their comfort zone. I'm always talking to you about. Yes, it's scary. Yes, it's not nice. And you think, you know, OK, I, you know, it's kind of I'd love to photograph people on the street. Yeah. But what happens if I get attacked? What happens if someone gets angry with me? But you've just heard a man who's done something extraordinary. You know, the benefits of doing it once you kind of go beyond what you think you can do. Definitely. Um, Definitely. And I think it's an ongoing process. Definitely. Absolutely. And adding to that. You know, I'm only I'm only 19. I haven't got much uh, life experience, um, and yeah, I really had to take a massive leap of faith into this challenge. I had no confidence I would survive it. I had no confidence that we'd be able to achieve it. There was a lot of fear of being rejected. Um, if we didn't achieve it, there was a lot of fear of um, letting people down. And I think just in these situations, you just have to go for it head first and. I'm sure it will work out no matter what. So it has for me. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God I'm still here. So, yeah, uh, good yes, one. Yes, yes. Mate, Thank thanks for much. spending a few moments to chat to no us. No worries. I know that this man's life has just been. Yesterday you were being interviewed by Channel 5 in yeah, London yeah. for the television, yeah. and, and like this man's life's become. Manic. All he wants to do is be quiet and peaceful <laughs> and people like me. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, Jude. Thank you and very much. guys, I hope you found that valuable. Please listen to what this man said. It really, really works to challenge ourselves. See you next time.